In this video, we are going to learn how to send an email in the ASP.NET Core application. We are going to start with a simple project creation and creating a basic email configuration. Once we finish that, we are going to install the required MailKit library and create the logic to send email messages from ASP.NET Core. We are going to show you both the synchronous and asynchronous ways to send email messages in ASP.NET Core and how to change the email body from the plain text to the pure HTML. Finally, we are going to learn how to include attachments in the email message. If you prefer to read about this topic and want to download the source code, you can visit our article on the Codemaze blog. The link is in the description below. So without further ado, Let's get started. We have created an empty ASP.NET Core Web API application and the first thing we're going to do is to add the .NET Core class library project with the name email service. Of course, we have to add a reference to the new project. After that, let's create a new email configuration class inside the new project. Here we create the from, SMTP server, port, username and the password properties that we are going to use for our email configuration. We are going to use the app settings.json file to populate these properties and in order to do that we have to modify that file. So let's create a new email configuration section and populate the values for all the properties from the email configuration class. Of course, these are the values for Gmail and you should use your credentials. To finish with the configuration process, we are going to modify the configure services method in the startup CS class. So we extract configuration values from the app settings file and register email configuration as a singleton. And that's all we need to configure our email service. Before starting any other operation in our project, we have to add the .NET Core MailKit library to the email service project. This library is going to help us to send our emails. Next, let's create a message class. Here we're gonna create a to property for the recipients, a subject property and a content property for the body of an email. In the constructor, we initialize the to property with an empty list and add all the recipients inside it. Also, we populate the subject and content properties. Then, Let's create a new iEmail sender interface with a single send email member. Of course, we're going to create an email sender class that implements the iEmail sender interface. Here, we use the dependency injection to inject the email configuration into the email sender class. And then, in the send email method, we call the create email message method to create an email message, and the send method to send that email. Now, let's implement those two missing methods. In the create email message method, we create a new my message object and use its from property to populate the sender from the configuration. 
the two property to add all the recipients, the subject property for the email subject and the body property to create the body for our email message. Lastly, we return this object. After this, we have to add the send method to this class. Inside it, we create a new SMTP object from the mailkit.net.smtp namespace and call the connect method with the server and the port. Remove the XOAuth2 authentication mechanism and call the authenticate method with our credentials. After that, we call the send method from the SMTP client object to send our email message. To dispose of our client, we use the finally block with the disconnect and dispose methods. Now, we have to register this service in the Startup CS class. To continue, let's inject the iEmail Sender interface in the Weather Forecast Controller and modify the GET action by creating a new message object where we pass the recipients subject and the email body parameters. Of course, we have to send our message by calling the send email method. That's it. Let's start our application, open Postman and send the request to the get action. As you can see, we get a 200 OK response. So let's check the source email server and we can see that our email was sent. Finally, let's check the destination server. Excellent, everything works as expected. Just one note here, if you're using the Gmail server as a source server and you get an error about the less secure apps, all you have to do is to sign in to your Gmail account, follow this link and turn on the allow option. In the previous example, we have been using the plain text as a body format, but we can use HTML as well with a simple modification to our code. All we have to do is to modify the create email message method by changing the body text format and the content itself. We can start the application again, repeat the same request from Postman and inspect the result. And there it is, our HTML body content. If we want to send email messages asynchronously, we have to make some changes to our project. Let's start with the interface modification by adding another method member. Next, let's modify the email sender class by adding the send email async method. Inside it, we use the same create email message as we did in the previous example and call the send async method to send our email message. Well, we have to add this missing method. Copy the entire content from the send method, paste it in this one and just modify the names we use for the connection, authentication, send message and disconnect. Finally, we have to modify the get action signature. Call the async method to send our email and change the title for the message object. Awesome! 
Now let's try this out with the same request from Postman. As we can see, we've got the expected result. In order to include attachments to our email messages, we have to provide the way for our application to process the attached files. To do that, let's start by adding a new POST action to our controller. We can copy the entire content from the previous action and paste it here. Now let's extract the files from the request if any or just create an empty form file collection object. Additionally, we're going to modify the parameters in the message constructor and add an additional files parameter. Of course, we have to modify the message class by adding new attachments property. And populating it inside constructor. Now let's move on to the email sender class. Here we use the body builder class to create a body for the email message. Additionally, we check the attachment files and if they exist, we iterate through each of them. Create memory stream object convert each of them to the byte array and add it to the attachments part from the bodybuilder object. Finally, we convert the bodybuilder object to the message body and return that message. Now, before we use Postman to send the request, we are going to add the form options configuration to the configure services method. With the form options configuration, we set the limit for its different properties to the maximum value. One more thing, we have to modify the call to the message constructor in the get action, because now it accepts four parameters. Now we can start our application. To prepare a request in Postman, we have to choose the POST method and to use the form data options to send files with the request. After we send the request, we can inspect the email we've sent. As you can see, we've sent the attachments as a part of our email message. Excellent! That's all for this video. We would highly appreciate your support by hitting those like and subscribe buttons down there. Of course, don't forget you can visit the Codemaze blog to download the source code. Additionally, you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in another video. Until then, all the best!